this is Keith with Bob CNC. As you can see, I've got my E3 set up and I'm ready to begin an engraving project. Now the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. And the shortest distance between setting up your E3 and a finished project is F engrave. What's most impressive about F engrave is it allows CNC neophytes like me to download graphic files bitmap or jpeg files and use them to create really great projects. All you have to do is learn to tweak a few basic parameters and F-Engrave will create a G-code file you can immediately download into UGS. Working with F-Engrave and UGS will help you learn and practice some fundamental CNC skills like homing your E3, setting the zero point of your workpiece, and the importance of things like speed and feed. Remember to take a few minutes to visit F Engrave's homepage at www.scorchworks.com. Get familiar with their documentation and be, be sure to check out their videos on YouTube. A couple of months ago I created a graphic design that combined the visual elements of the American flag with some Bible verses. I use Microsoft Publisher to do the layout. When I got my E3, I wanted to see if I could make an engraving using that graphic file. Here's what the original design looked like in Publisher. I converted the full color image into black and white and saved it as a JPEG. I then opened the JPEG using Paint.net, which is a free program that works well with Microsoft Windows, and then converted the JPEG into a bitmap file. I did that because when F Engrave opens bitmap files, it automatically converts them to scalable graphic files, which I've discovered makes for cleaner engraving. With F Engrave open, let's take a tour of the uh, work page. At the top, you'll notice on the left hand side your tab settings for File, Edit, View, Settings, and Help. Chances are the only two you'll ever use will be the File tab and the Settings tab. With this screen, with the logo on the screen, you'll notice text, font, properties. Uh, F Engrave gives you the option to design a text file, choose fonts, and make other changes to the design, and save those as a G code file. You'll find all of that in F Engrave's documentation on their website. However, since I already have a design created, I'm going to highlight, highlight the uh, File tab and I'm going to open the DXF bitmap file. A search box open and you'll notice the search filter is set for DXF bitmap files. Now if you're looking for a JPEG, you're going to want to change the filter to All Files. If you don't do this, F Engrave won't recognize the JPEG and will act as if it can't be found. But of course, I'm looking for a bitmap file. Now on my desktop, I have a master folder in which I have subfolders for design ideas I want to develop. JPEGs I've already created and saved, and one for projects I've converted to bitmap files. So. Selecting that folder, I'm looking for my bitmap files, and I'm going to select the black and white image of the flag I was working on. Now it's only going to take F Engrave a couple seconds to load this file, but I want you to notice we've gone from text properties to image properties because again we're working with a design file. The image height is set at 2 inches. If you drop down to the bottom of the page, you'll notice bounding box, and that's the dimensions, width, and height of a finished engraving. And this is set at a little over 4 inches by 2 inches. It's important to remember the size of the image on your screen uh, has nothing to do with the bounding box. The bounding box are the finished dimensions of your engraving. Now I'm going to change the height of my engraving because I want it a little taller than 2 inches and I'm going to make it 3 inches. Now as soon as I alter a property, F Engrave will want me to perform a recalculation. But before I do that, I'm going to make some additional adjustments. Underneath Image Position and Orientation, 
under Origin, I'm going to select Mid Center. And the reason I'm doing this is I want to create the zero point for my workpiece. I work with scrap pieces of acrylic plastic, and I have any number of random sized rectangular pieces. It's easy to draw intersecting lines from corner to corner to determine the centerpiece of that workpiece. Now with that in mind, when I have selected the mid-center option, F engrave will highlight the uh, Y axis, that's the green light right here, and the X axis, the red line right here, and where they intersect, that is the center point of this design. Below the image position, you'll notice G-code properties. Feed rate. This is the rate in inches per minute that the engraver bit is going to move through the material. You'll notice the default is set at 5 inches a minute. I'm going to change it to 25 inches per minute, which is uh, not too fast to move through uh, acrylic plastic. My plunge rate determines how fast the engraver bit moves into the workpiece, and again, 25 inches a minute is more than acceptable. ZSafe programs how high the bit will rise above the workpiece before it moves to its next program coordinate. The default in F engrave is 1 quarter inch, 025 but I've determined I don't need the bit to rise that high. So I'm going to change this adjustment to 0.125 or 1 eighth of an inch. When it comes to cut depth, that's the parameter that determines how deep I want the bit to cut into my workpiece. In this particular engraving, I don't want the bit to cut deeper than 1 eighth of an inch. Now it's important to remember the surface of the workpiece is your Z0. The depth of your cut must be set below 0. So my setting is going to be negative 0.125 or 1 eighth of an inch below the surface. Now, having set the G code properties, I need to make some adjustments in the setting tab. So going right back to the top of the page, I highlight settings, select it, and I drop down and I pick V-carve settings. When the setting box opens, this is where you're going to designate the type of bit you're using, whether it's a V-bit, a ball nose bit, or a straight bit. And again, I've selected V-bit. The V-angle uh, the default is 60 degrees, the angle on my bit is sharper. It is a 30 degree bit. The default diameter is one half inch. I'm using a much thinner bit. Mine is 0.125, one eighth of an inch wide. My cut depth again is a negative 0.125. And those are the only parameters I have to deal with right here. So I've got a V-bit. It's got a 30 degree angle. Uh, the diameter is 1 eighth of an inch. And I want my cut depth to be 1 eighth of an inch. So I can close the setting box. And I can now drop down. And I can calculate the V-carve. Now that this has been completed, you'll notice that the appearance of the lettering has changed. The black lines indicate the material that will be removed and the white lines indicate the tool path your bit will follow. Once this step is completed, you're ready to save the G-code file. Highlight the file tab, select save G-code file, again I'm looking to my desktop, I select my project files. I have a file folder for my G-code files, and I'm going to save that. In less than 15 minutes, you've used F Engrave to open a graphic file, set G-code properties and tool parameters, created and saved a G-code file that's now ready for production on your E3. 
In our next segment together, I'm going to walk you through the steps of downloading G-Code into UGS, homing your E3, mounting a workpiece on the spoiler board, setting the zero point of your workpiece, and turning your E3 into a project making machine. This has been Keith for Bob CNC. Thanks for watching.